The mind once stretched by a new idea never returns to its usual self. Uh, that was a quote by Ralph Waldo. Seven years or eight years ago, I took a trek to the top of Mount Kenya, the second largest, uh, highest mountain in Africa. This was through the Silimon Gate, Nanyuki Silimon Gate. You get into the Mount Kenya National Reserve. You walk for about four hours. You reach um, the first camp, the college camp Old Moses. That is probably around six because you get into the gate around two in the afternoon. You put up there for the night. Of course, you have a guide and um, you take your meal in the evening. There are some beds there you sleep, like a dormitory. The following day early in the morning at eight, you, seven, you take your breakfast. You leave Camp Old Moses. You walk for another four to five hours. So by 12, 1 p.m., you reach Camp uh, Shipton. Where, from where then you can see the mountain up you very clearly and um, you put up there, you rest. Of course you find many other people, mountain climbers who are either camping there or they are waiting. The, th the second day, early in the morning at 3 a.m. you wake up, very, very, very cold at night. You have to be in your sleeping bag and you have to have several layers of clothes on you, very warm, because it's very, very freezing cold at night. And some of those particular points, unless maybe recently, you start losing even network in terms of uh, the provider mobile networks. Then early in the morning at 3, you wake up, the guide wakes you up, you take a quick breakfast and you start climbing now in the dark. To do three hours, by 6 a.m. in the morning, you are at Point Lenana. And you take about 30 minutes of photography, again a very cold, very cold, cold area. And particularly from that point, what was interesting for me is that you can see Mount Kilimanjaro, which is the, the highest mountain in Africa. You can see the peaks from that particular Point Lenana across of course it's so many kilometers because it is on the border of kenya and tanzania and mount kenya it's in the middle of our country beloved country kenya and then of course uh, after taking a photography by seven you start climbing down declining it is equally as difficult as going up so sometimes you slide on your on your bum then you come down to shipton you rest a bit, then you take your luggage together with your guide, you head for Old Moses, you put up for the night at Old Moses, and then the third day is when now you start walking out of the park. For me, it didn't, it took me three days. The fourth day is when you come from Old Moses out of the park. For me, it took three, me three days, because once I reached the top, that day I reached the top is when I came all the way down and out of the park. But then, of course, you have your ankles, your feet uh, crying for, for rest and you have them aching for another four days. Why am I giving you the story of my Mount Kenya climbing experience? It's because there are some several business leadership lessons that we can be able to draw from mountain climbing. The first one is preparation. It took me about six months of ensuring I run between four to five kilometers every three days in a week. Physically, I would say I was fit. Of course, I was younger, but I would say I was physically fit. Therefore, even when you are getting into business, when you have a docket in a business environment to deliver, preparation is everything. Whether you are preparing a presentation, a proposal, you are preparing a product launch, you are preparing a brand development project, preparation is very key in everything that you do. The second lesson that we draw from this particular 
exp expedition of going up to, up to Point Lenana, which is almost 4,500 um, 4,500 meters above sea level or beyond that, is the issue of team. Team is very key. I remember my neighbor was the one who encouraged me to register for this. But we were to go together with him. He dropped out like two days to the, to the day of uh, leaving for Nanyuki. But I remember I was hooked up to a guide and the, that particular guide proved to be very valuable. You can't do that alone. And then of course when I reached there I met uh, three couples. One was German, the other, the other one was Danish, and there was also an Italian couple. In fact, the Italian, Italian couple had come there for about two weeks because for them they do, wanted to do Point Batian. And Point Batian, you must be a professional mountain climber. You require gear to be able to go to Batian. Majority of people who go to climb Mount Kenya who are not professional mountain climbers they go to Point Lenana, which I went to. So you need those, we were encouraging each other. The sad thing about it is the couple from, uh, the Danish couple, never managed to go beyond Chipton. Their wife developed um, nausea at night. That night we were to leave at 3 a.m. in the morning. She developed nausea, she started puking. Uh, she had to be, and she had, to be walked on a stretcher by some guides back to Old Moses because Old Moses is where most of the vehicular, the vehicles could be able to pick her up. Otherwise from Ch Shipton, she either had to be lifted. I felt very sad for that couple because they had paid all the way from Norway. I think they had come from Holland, Denmark and they had come to climb Mount Kenya. For me, I was a local, so it had taken me not more than three hours to get to Nanyuki from where I stay. But for them, you can imagine they had flown all the way. It was holiday, partly also mountain climbing, but they had to go back because the wife developed uh, problems and she was uh, admitted at a hospital in Nanyuki. So what I'm trying to say is team is important because you keep motivating. Even when you are in a project, you are, you are delivering a project for a business, or your own business, you need a team around you to encourage each other, to push each other, to be able to uh, keep, you know, you know uh, encouraging each other. The other critical lesson that you may pick from this particular experience is don't burn out quickly. I know the first day when I got into the park at two in the afternoon, my body was still very energetic. But I remember listening to the questions and to the comments from my guide. He told me, take it easily, because they will reach a point whereby you cannot even be able to walk. So I took it easy, but I've also learned, because I have done the Nairobi Stanch at Marathon, 21km. I've also, I used to do severally the Deto Heartland. I think later on it was Karen Hospital, 10km uh, run. What I noted is that when you are starting the marathon, guys are running very fast. People are competing against each other. But after the 10 kilometer mark, then even the five kilometer mark, everybody starts falling out. So don't start in a rush. Even when you are undertaking a business, look at it in form of a marathon. When you are undertaking a project where you are employed, whether it is an NGO, a business environment, a corporate, an SME, look at your project in terms of the wrong, the long run. Look at it in form of a marathon. Don't exhaust your resources, especially mentally and um, even physically, very early in the game. The other critical learning that um, I picked from a mountain expedition is focus on the next 10 steps. I want to tell you for a fact, on the second day, when you are now moving from uh, Old Moses to Shipton, at, at a point I gave all my luggage to my guide, even my small bag. I was only now walking myself 
because I could feel exhaustion setting in. So sometimes, now even now the third day as we came down from Point Lenana back to Shipton all the way to Old Moses and out, by the time we reached Old Moses it was around maybe three in the afternoon. My legs had almost given out. So you concentrate on the next 10 steps. Sometimes in business environments, in projects that we do even where we work in corporate uh, business environments, you may find you need to focus on the next step, the next tactic, the next um, activity of the day because you feel you're almost giving up. Don't give up. Focus on the next uh, several steps because after that, the cloud clears because I know when I reached the gate, I had already requested for a cab from Nanyuki town because they can't be allowed to get into the park unless it's an emergency. Unless you have been, you can't walk. I had requested for a cab, so I just dropped into the cab and uh, took me all the way to Nanyuki. I remember I couldn't even wait for them to process my photos. That's the time we used to have the still photos. And the guy had taken the photos using his camera. So focus on the next 10 steps. The other critical lesson that I took from my expedition, expedition and trek to Point Lenana was the issue of conserving your resources. Conserve your water, conserve your food, and especially water. Food I had carried enough. My guide had guided me. That's why sometimes it's also good to learn, to listen to experts. That gentleman had climbed Mount Kenya for the last 15 years as a guide. And therefore he had told me what to buy and what, because he was the one who did the shopping for, for me. But the critical thing is that at one point or the other you start running out, especially on water. Ensure you conserve your resources. In a management leadership position, if you are running your own business, look at what are your critical resources. For example, manpower. For example, financial resources. For example, time and conserve them because at the hour of need they will come in very hardy. Some two bonus last uh, lessons that we would pick up from uh, mountain climbing is do not forget to enjoy the journey. Of course the first second day I was all eager. The first day you clear the forested area, you put up in old mosses. The second day now you start going what you call the moorland, the stones, the black, uh, the black kind of thing you see when you look up to, up to Mount Kenya from down here. It's moorland, there are bushes, there are rocks. You enjoy. There is also some very good mountain rivers that have very clean water. So you also sip and drink some of that as you go because it's clean. You enjoy the environment. When you reach Chipton, Again, the stories that my guide was giving me as we were walking, were sharing, were also motivating. I was enjoying hearing, because he was telling when they were, they were constructing uh, Camp Shipton, uh, cement, cement had to be carried on people's back up those particular mountains all the way to Shipton from Old Moses. And some, there is a, one of the guys who was carrying cement who died as he carried cement. So some of these things will keep you, of course, a little bit scared, but also you grow and they help you to continue on. What am I talking about? Enjoy, enjoy the journey because you have taken time, you have invested in that guide, you have invested in those four days because minimum it takes you four days to go up and come back. Lastly, the last uh, lesson that you can pick up or you can take is trek trek lean i've told you at one point or the other i could not even want to see a bag next to me two kg worth of uh, an item becomes like 20 kg trek lean and of course your guide will help you and talk to you and help you and show you how to do it even in organizations we talk about lean management look at those distractions that are coming your way that are not necessary in your business. Leave them out. Look at, for example, unnecessary cost expenditure 
that you may not require. The Japanese are very keen on lean management. I would encourage you also to embrace it and look at lean management or leadership. Finally, remember, the sun shines brightest from the peaks of the mountain.